Jarvis, welcome to Misfits. It's good to be here. We last spoke on the Prime Card fight night yeah. when it was announced yeah. Jarvis is back. Now you're here. How do you feel? I feel great. I feel ready to go. You know, we've got three days. Uh, I'm just excited to get back in there. How's it been since that night? Have you been able to, to focus on training? I know you're, you're based out of the country. Yeah. Um, what's, it, what's it been like for you? I mean, I've been in camp this, like, this whole year. I've had uh, fight after fight, fights getting delayed, fights getting canceled. So I've kind of just been in the gym training hard. Um, when you know who your opponent is, it uh, gives you a different kind of focus. So when I found out it was B-Day when I got home, I was fully 100% locked in, ready to go. I heard you had a, a couple of names was sort of kicking around before B Dave yeah. was confirmed, but you sort of lead us on nicely to the confirmation of B Dave. Yeah. When you were told that, what was your initial response? This is B Dave who, he's game, he's a good fighter. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was extremely excited. Um, you never want to look over an opponent, but um, B Dave compared to some of the other people I fought, um, I would say it's not on their level. So, you know, I'm excited to make easy work of them. Who, who are you referring to when you, when you talk about previous Like uh, people like Gibb, yeah. Tom Zanetti. Uh, both of those people, I'd say, are harder opponents um, compared to B-Day. But like I said, you can never overlook someone. So I'm taking him as, uh, as serious as anyone I've fought before, uh, if not more. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned both Tom Zanetti and Gibb, two fighters that we've seen a lot of, especially yeah. Tom here on, here on Misfits. And Tom is the kind of fighter who, I guess in some ways, a bit similar to B. Davies in that yeah. he's, he's going to come forward, he's aggressive, yeah. he's not going to, he's not going to let you work the way you maybe maybe you want to work. Yeah. Does that stead you in in good stead? I guess Does that put you in good stead knowing that you you face this style fighter before. Yeah, hundred percent. It's kind of a style that I enjoy fighting. Uh, someone that comes forward, throws a lot of shots. Uh, it's going to be a lot of, you know, inside work, working on the inside. So, uh, just. That's what, that's what I've been training for. That's what I'm ready for. The, the Gibb fight, of course, was a huge occasion. It was a, a massive fight for you personally yeah. and, and professionally. Um, we know the way it went. What yeah. was it like for you after the fight, when, when, when you got back to the dressing room? Yeah, after the fight, um, I had time to like look back on, see how I was feeling. And uh, in those couple of weeks, I realized you know, what went wrong and um, how I can fix that for next time. It gave me even more motivation to get back in there and, uh, you know, just have a great comeback fight. Do you think that makes you more dangerous for B Dave, given that, yeah. like you say, it's the comeback? How yeah. it, you're not, if you'd won, maybe you're not looking to fix things now. Yeah, yeah. Now exactly. you've had to reflect on that. Definitely. Does that make you a tougher opponent? Yeah, it makes me, uh, you know, more hungry to win, uh, more disciplined. Uh, yeah, everything. Have you had time to have a look around the Misfits sort of universe? There's a lot of names. Yeah, B, B yeah. Dave has a few people, <laughs> you know, that have him high on the hit list. But you're there first, and if if you take this win on on Friday, then there's a big there's a big space for you. Have you Definitely. had the chance to have a look around and maybe eye up some potential future opponents? Yeah, for sure. So um, when I get the belt at 155, I'm assuming I'll have to defend it first. So potential names. Um, uh, Nick Lmao, Alex Wasabi, those were two names that were down to fight 155. It just wasn't the right time. Uh, other names I want to fight is Austin McBroom. We've been having like a back and forth mm -hmm. for a while. There's some, you know, beef between us. So I would love to get in the ring with him. And then I also want to be a Misfits champ with at two weights. So the weight um, I really like is 165 which uh, currently is held by Slim. Mm -hmm. So he's definitely one of the end goals for me. We saw you, I think, hop in the ring with, with Slim yeah. after that fight. Can you just enlighten us a little bit? What yeah, was... that didn't go how I wanted. <laughs> um, but, you know, you know, stuff happens, that's how it goes. But, um, you know, I want to prove to everyone that I'm, you know, worthy to fight Slim, uh, a champ right now. And, um, whether that's after this fight, next fight, third fight, doesn't matter when, uh, I'll be ready. One, one final thing on B Dave before we turn the, the, the focus onto you in your camp. B Dave, as active as he has been on Misfits, it's yeah. rare that we see him in an orthodox one-on-one yeah. -on -one 
normal fight, yeah. normal in air quotes. Um, Pinedo was the mystery opponent, so he didn't really have much time to yeah. get his head around what was going on in front of him. Then you've got a couple of tag team fights, and there's, there's a survivor tag. How has it been trying to study him with all that going on? Yeah, I mean, so you can kind of study his style in these fights, but with the whole tag team and it's not proper boxing in that sense, you know. Blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> on the night, you know, when he's in there, uh, if he feels like tapping out, he can get out of the ring. Uh, in the first 30 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever it is, you're wearing 14 ounce gloves. It's uh, it's a big difference when you put on 10 ounce gloves and you're in there for three minutes, uh, back to back to back to back. Um, so he's gonna see that in the later rounds in this fight. If it, if it gets that far, um, it's definitely gonna wear him out. With you being based abroad then, focus back on yourself and with you being based over in America, it's not just as easy as for some of these guys where we can hop on a train and, and go down and see him at the gym. Yeah. We, we see clips online of you sparring with Floyd Mayweather and tra yeah. training in that gym. What, what, what is that like? Just try and give us an insight into what it's like over there. Uh, you know, it's, it's different than any gym I've trained at. Uh, the kind of people you meet there, the, uh, the faces you see, um, a lot of big prospects and you see them training as hard as they are. Um, it makes you motivated and want to, you know, go as hard as as they are and hard as you can go. And uh, it just pushes me uh, every day just to work harder. The, the Floyd Spar, I, I admittedly, is going back a little bit. But yeah. how did that come about? And how did you feel when, because um, sometimes you have to take stock, yeah? Like, yeah. things are going well, sure. For sure. But I'm standing opposite Floyd Mayweather and we're about to throw gloves. Okay, yeah. it's sparring, but, but still. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely not something I was expecting on a Monday night, but kind of my coach, um, uh, trains with Floyd and he told me to come to the gym. He didn't say anything about what was going on. And then I got there, I saw Floyd was in the gym. He was getting wrapped up, getting ready to spar. I was like, oh, who, who, we're about, I'm about to watch Floyd spar. Who's it going to be? And then he says, um, you want to get some rounds in with, with the champ? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, go on, <laughs> why not? Like, go, go on, I could never turn down the opportunity. So got wrapped up, uh, got warmed up, ready to go. And then next thing I know, I'm getting bashed up by, <laughs> by Floyd Mayweather. That's worth it. What, yeah. did, what, what was that like when you, when you go home afterwards and you're sort of driving home? Or oh, whatever? I, had a, I had a smile on my face the whole night. It was honestly, um, I was all bruised up and bashed up, but I was feeling, I was on like a high that I've never yeah. felt before. It was great. That's insane. Um, okay, move back to Friday. What, what happens when the first bell goes and all the singing and dancing and talking, whatever is, it's done. What happens on Friday night? Friday, uh, if he's not out in the first couple rounds, I'm going to keep going to him, keep, you know, throwing combinations, wearing him down. And in those later rounds, when his legs are getting tired, his hands are getting low, that's when I'm really going to, that's when I'm really going to put him down. We can't wait to see it. Jarvis, welcome to Misfits. Look forward to, to seeing your Misfits debut yeah. on Friday night. We can't wait. We'll see you there. Let's get it.